Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about how to cope with mental illness. Now before we start on the pointers, I'd like to tell you where I've come from because uh, there's a good saying that I like to say is you don't know where you're going before you know where you came from, if that makes sense. So anyway, let's give you a bit of my history and my background. So to most people, right, mental health is this overarching scary feature right it's like when I, when I remember when I was first diagnosed and I was sitting in front of the the, the doctor and I was just like my, it felt like my life had ended right nothing had changed but to me in my mind it was like that brought up being given that diagnosis and it was quite a serious one at the time it was paranoid schizophrenia being given that diagnosis it brought it all to the front and I couldn't ignore it any longer. I had to, you know, it was there. I had to deal with it. It was there. So, um, yeah, it can be this big, huge beast and it can be really scary. Can't be conquered or you can't live with it. It's quite hard at the start. And, you know, diagnosis can be scary, right? Doctors can also be scary. Factual and sometimes really unempathetic. Like, they'll just sit there cold as day and tell you what you have and that's the fact of it sometimes and sometimes it feels like no one understands like no one you're going through all these really intense emotional pain and it just feels like no one understands at all and i went through most of my adult life like that until i actually started um going to places where people had been through it all before and then i felt listened to and then i felt empathy that's a different story that though maybe a different time psychiatric um inpatient visits are just not the best every time i've been in a psychiatric hospital it has been horrible right and it can feel like just an overall uphill struggle it just it can so let's break it down right just to um make it seem less scary for you to me and my thinking and what I've had in the past is mental health is a combination of emotional health, communication style and boundary channel eh, and boundary challenges. And here's why. So as a child, right, I was always challenging my boundaries and my experiences. I wasn't great at it, I must admit. I was average, let's say. Um you know, but I was still uh, succeeding. Um, but something severely traumatic happened to me. And it just, like, blew my world perception out the water. Just did. And it happened when I was going through a period of psychosis. So um, what happened is I think I, um, I got drunk for something like a week solid. And I was off work for two weeks. And at that, that end week, I decided to cut off the drink. I said, right... No more, and then after I went through the delirium theorems, I think delirium tremens, yeah, that's it. The, the delirium tremens went through a massive period of psychosis and ended up in hospital. And through what happened in my psycho psychosis, it just blew my world perception outside the window. It might be different for you, but this is what happened to me. And the trauma sent me back years, I literally did, it sent me back years and years and years and years. And I'd become severely challenged to challenge my boundaries again. I, I was really, really scared to challenge my boundaries again, like really scared. And mainly because I thought that something like that would happen to me again if I ever tried it. So I was like locked inside this, this bubble. Trauma can really, really set you back years and it could make you anxious and give you anxiety and all sorts. And and through that, I became very, very, very paranoid, you know, paranoid to step outside that boundary. And through that, I became very withdrawn. I started withdrawn from my friendship circles. I started pretty much withdrawn from society. The reason I love computers and the internet now it's because in my 20s I spent so much time on it because it just completely withdrew from society, society. I was also scared to talk about it. That was part of the paranoia. I thought if I opened up, 
I would just get slapped down. And through that, I just, I didn't talk about it with anyone. I was like a closed book. Yeah. People would know that something was up, but I just, I was too scared to tell them. And so could you just imagine the impact that all of what I've just told you um, would have had on my emotional well-being, my communication, yeah, thinking and withdrawn, and challenging my boundaries. Yeah, that's quite epic, the, um, the impact that that would have had. It was tough. So one thing that I will say before you even try any of these pointers that I'm going to get is seek the right help for you, right? I sought help. I didn't do it alone. It's really, really tough to do alone. I mean, don't do it on your own. You need help and professional help. And I didn't actually realise that until I cared enough about myself to go and get help because I went through a long period of just not giving a crap about what happened to me, right? So I would say there was about a period of two years where I just completely disassociated from society and then after that two years I was sort of maybe bobbing my head up for, for air and questioning whether I should get myself help. And through my experiences, here's my best advice to you, is sometimes the help is really poor, right? Sometimes the help that you get, they're only looking for their next paycheck, right? So it's up to you to understand if it feels good or if it doesn't feel good, yeah? I'm not saying this is everyone, but there's been once or twice when I've had to change who I was seeing, be that a psychologist, a psychotherapist, a doctor, a counsellor, you know, there's been one or twice where I've had to change because I didn't feel it was right for me. And don't be scared to do that. Um, one thing that I used to do when I was a lot younger and when I'd just been diagnosed is I, t I took what the doctor said as the gospel. And just sometimes they don't know what they're talking about, right? <laughs> you know what's best for you and you know, you guide by how you feel. But just remember, sometimes those professionals will challenge your boundaries to the max. Sometimes you'll meet your own devils, right? You'll meet, you'll meet your own demons, trust me on that one, and sometimes it will be so crushingly painful, but you'll be better and more stronger for it, right? But that's a good thing. If they're making you do that, that's a good thing. That's That's good, yeah? meet your demons good but i eventually sought the the you know the right people for me and i eventually got it worked out but just be aware that it sometimes can take years to do that right to get a combination of people who work for you i think i had a counselor a psychotherapist a doctor a psychologist and a psychological consultant i think and i'd worked it out that they were all working harmoniously to benefit me and it was an ideal situation which I know not everyone can get but there we are. I had help as well. I had I went to um I contacted mental health charities and they helped me with that as well. So but just remember it took me years to get to that point. But the journey was amazing. I discovered so much about myself, you know, that's far more than I ever would hadn't I not gotten a mental illness, illness, coincidentally. Here are a few tips how I coped with all of that, okay, is step one, get help, right? I just covered that. You're not going to do it on your own, I promise you, yeah? One thing that I like to say to people is how are you going to know to help anyone else if you don't even know how to help yourself, right? Sometimes professionals are able to spot things in you, or sorry, spot things in you that you just don't realise or are unsure, uh, don't see, or you've got a blind spot to. That's what they're there for. They make you realise that, yeah? So um, get help, right? That's the first thing. Step two, another important one, is stop abusing substances, right? If you're like me, when it got tough, you took to the drugs or you took to the drink or even took to both of them, stop it. I bet your life will be a hundred times easier if you just cut that out of your life. I'm telling you, when I cut alcohol and drugs out of my life, it just simplified it 
a thousandfold. And I also noticed things like my reaction time, my memory started to come back. I was able to, I was more fitter, I was able to run faster, you know, all, all these things, right? When I stopped abusing substances, I was so much more quicker on the ball and I was, my reflexes were there and, you, you know, it's just, <laughs> stop abusing substances and you'll stop getting yourself into bad situations and having to work yourself out of them. Trust me on that one. Number three, get a hobby, right? One of the most important things. A lot of people, th this is like one of my favourite things to tell people is to get a hobby, right? doesn't matter what hobby. As long as you've had an interest in it or you've always wanted to learn it but never had the confidence to learn it, make that step, right? Just go out, research it online, join maybe a few groups online. You don't need to actively engage with it. You can just passively engage with it, talk to people, so on, and get a feel for how the hobby is. A lot of people ask me why I, I say this, and it's because it distracts you, right? Well, one thing I did is when the very first time I stopped drinking, because I was pretty much an alcoholic, right? I really struggled with the drink at the start. And one thing I did is I got myself a few hobbies. So, like, I would get up at four o'clock in the morning just to picture the sunset at the, the sunset at the beach. And I really loved taking photos and taking them back to my computer and uploading them and digitally enhancing them. And that really distracted me from wanting a drink. And it also distracted me how crap my life was at that point. I mean, it, it wasn't crap, I'd say, but in my mind it was crap. But it, um, it really distracted me from that really did it's getting a hobby is a very rewarding distracting experience i really recommend it number four learn don't be afraid to pick up a book and learn yeah challenge your perceptions pick up a book learn something new learn about history learn about what's on in the world at the moment learn as much as you can the more you learn the more understanding that you will be yeah, I've found that the more I try and understand the world, the more understanding I am to other people's actions. Learning is a really, really good learning experience. I, I really recommend it. It will enhance your understanding and general central comfortability tenfold. Number five. Always take risks, right? I mean, okay, I don't mean a risk like jump off a cliff and try and see if you don't splat on the um, the surface. No, I don't mean those types of risks. I mean like if you have a house offer in another country, take it and see how it works out. The more risks you take, the more confident you'll be in dealing with the fallout, right? One thing I didn't do when I first had my men um was diagnosed with my mental illness is I was desperately scared to step out that comfort zone in case anything like that happens again happens again. But eventually I slowly took small baby steps until gradually increased it until now I'm taking massive risks. Sometimes too much at a risk, but you know, take risks, it will enhance your coping mechanism. I trust you I promise you on that. The more risks you take and the more fallout you deal with, the more coping mechanism you will have, right? Trust me on that one. And number six, last but not least, is learn to take control of your actions, right? Your friend may have convinced you that it was a really, really good idea to do that massively stupid thing and it was their fault, but actually it wasn't their fault because you still agreed that it would be a good idea, right? You still made that choice in your mind to follow your friend. You could have said no, yeah? Unless your friend had a gun to your head, it was your choice to go ahead and do it, yeah? No matter peer or social pressure or whatever, right? You still made that choice in your head to go and do that. So learn to take complete control of your life, yeah? 
And if you follow these rules, and especially with number one, help, they will help you along with this, you will hopefully start to crush it. <laughs> I, I said, I've made it sound really easy. It's not, it takes years to do, but start now, yeah. It's never too early, yeah. And it's never too late, yeah. Start now, work through them, get better, right? New studies okay. available on Prolific. I hope that was informational. Um, please leave a comment underneath and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, speak to you in my next video.